What's going on, everybody? So yesterday, we had the opportunity to film an episode of the SOTK podcast, and we talked about prayer. It was with Nathan Russell. Make sure you guys check it out. It was an incredible episode. It was a great time, and there was so much to take away from it. One of the topics that we talked about within the episode was different situations and and learning how to pray differently. That prayer isn't always just us asking things. Normally, it does fall back to that, but a lot of times, it's about hearing what God has to say, hearing what God wants to speak in that moment. And so I went on to explain that there are a lot of times where I'll just sit and quietly wait for God to put something on my heart. If you heard the episode where we talked about hearing God's voice, for me, a lot of times it's not an audible. It's more of a thought that's planted in my head that I wouldn't have thought that. I wouldn't have been able to think that. Or I'm asking a question and the answer is placed in my head as a thought. And so that reminds me of one time I was praying. It was when I was diving into First and Second Samuel, learning about the life of David and how he was a man after God's own heart. And I just so badly desired that for my own life. I wanted to be just known as a man after God's own heart. Somebody who doesn't want to do anything in his own strength, but that fully relies on God. And so I remember it so clearly. I was on my way to the gym. I pulled over just before going in. I was just praying and and thanking God for all that he had done for me, praying for my family. And then I just said, God, make me like David. Make me a man after your own heart. And it was at that moment I just stopped and I just waited on the Lord, sat in silence just simply waiting for him to speak something to me. And it was at that moment, a thought came into my head. And to me, it was so clear that God was saying, I didn't make you to want to be like somebody else. I made you because I have plans for you. And your plans are not so you could be better than somebody or worse than somebody, but it's so you can do exactly what I've called you to do to glorify me. Because at the end of the day, everything we do needs to glorify God. The only reason, the only purpose that we're here on earth is so that we can bring glory to his name. And so it was so clear to me that it's not so much about wanting to be like, like I have a clip I'm going to insert right here. So roll that. Uh, 43, you just stay there where you are. It says that God created us for his glory. In Isaiah 49, that God called Israel for his glory. In Psalm 106, that God rescued Israel from Egypt for his glory. That God raised up Pharaoh to show his power and glorify his name. That's Romans 9, very unpopular chapter. God defeated Pharaoh at the Red Sea to show his glory. God spared Israel in the wilderness for the glory of his name. That's Ezekiel 20. God gave Israel victory in Canaan for the glory of his name. Why did he drive out that people? In fact, he tells Israel something we need to remember. He literally comes to Israel and goes, I'm not driving them out because you guys are awesome. You are a stiff-necked, rebellious people. I'm driving them out because I'm awesome. Let me keep going. I could stop. I can't. I got time. I'm on a clicker here. All right. God gave Israel victory in Canaan for the glory of his name. That's 2 Samuel 7, 1 Samuel 12. God did not cast away his people for the glory of his name. Go ahead and tuck that one in. We'll come back. All right. He does not throw his people away for the glory of his name. We'll come back. All right. Um, In Ezekiel 36, God restored Israel from exile for the glory of his name. John 7, 18, Jesus sought the glory of his father in all that he did. In Matthew 5, 16 and 1 Peter 2, 12, we see that Jesus tells us to do good works for the glory of his name. All right, I'll I'll keep going. Some of you are still skeptical, okay? Um, In John 14, Jesus said that he answers prayer that God may be glorified. In John 12 and John 17, Jesus endures his final hours of suffering for the glory of God. In Romans 3, 25 through 26, God gave his son to vindicate the glory of his righteousness. Do you understand that one? Let, Let me try to unpack it just a little bit. Does anybody ever have a problem with the fact that God just forgave David without Jesus? I mean, was was he not a adulterer and a murderer? Doesn't it make God unjust if God goes, you know what, don't worry about it. Yeah, I mean, you slept with another man's wife, impregnated her, and then had her murdered. But you know what? I'm not holy like that. Don't worry about it. We're cool. I've done some shady stuff. No, God's ferociously holy. So so why can, how in the world is it possible for God to be, uh, uh, for David to be a man after God's own heart? He's such a bum. Now, I can play the heart, but you're not going to bring that up because he's killed lions with his hands. All right, so you can pop off about that, but he could rip you in half. So how is it possible? Because Jesus Christ is going to vindicate the forgiveness of all our brothers in the Old Testament. 
all our sisters in the Old Testament. Let's keep going. I want to set up shop there, but we don't have the time. John 16, 14, the ministry of the Holy Spirit is to glorify the Son of God. Why do you have the Holy Spirit? To glorify the Son of God. All right? God instructs us honestly to do everything for the glory of God. Have you ever tried to, um, you ever tried to implement 1 Corinthians 10, 31? Whether you eat or drink or whatever you do, do all things to the glory of God? You ever thought about how to do that? Like, how do you eat breakfast to the glory of God? How do you uh, drive your car to the glory of God? How do you, I mean, this is the command. Right? It's not a suggest. Look, hey, guys, if you get a chance, try to do everything to glorify me. It's not, it's not a suggestion. Do everything for my glory. A couple more. God tells us to serve in a way that will glorify him. That's 1 Peter 4. Jesus is coming again for the glory of God. That's 2 Thessalonians chapter 1. Jesus' ultimate aim for us is that we see and enjoy his glory. That's John 17. Habakkuk chapter 2, spectacular, that the earth will be filled with a knowledge of the glory of the Lord like the waters cover the seas. I don't know if you've been out in the sea, but there's water everywhere. <laughs> I, mean, I don't know if you've paid attention like that, but everywhere... On the sea, there's water. And Habakkuk in chapter 2 says the glory of God is going to do this. It's going to cover the earth like the waters cover the sea. And that we put our hope there. We put our, our, our um, satisfaction there. Everything that happens will redound to the glory of God. That's Romans chapter 11. That's a hard one for people. Everything will redound to the glory of God. And in the new Jerusalem, the glory of God replaces the sun. Man, if you chew on that one for a little while, that's Revelation 21, 23. If you chew on that, think of all that the sun does for us. Without it, there is no life. But Jesus says, when I make all things new, we don't need that gas or ball anymore. I got it. I'll handle it. I'll be your light. I'll make it grow. I'll make you warm. I'll make you what the sun does, I will do. And that's what you see. Now, now flip over to Ephesians chapter 1. Ephesians chapter 1. Now, um, what, what you see in the Bible is this is from Genesis to Revelation, the, the story of the Bible, that God, for the glory of his name, is reconciling and reclaiming all things to himself. So this is what you've got to get. I want to try to help you here with something that's pretty big, pretty epic. All right, so look right at me. The Bible's not about you. The Bible's about Jesus. See, there's two ways to kind of look at it. There's some people that go, this Bible's the roadmap to life. Now, I understand what they're saying. So if you've heard that from your guy, great. Uh, th this is in some ways uh, a roadmap of what we should do, where we should go. What, but, but ultimately, you can't call it the roadmap to life. All right now, I want to be straight. There's some maps. <laughs> there, there are some maps. Like right here, I've got Paul's first missionary journey. And then I believe that's the Temple Mount. And then this is just... It's the Middle East today. Uh, so there are maps back there, but ultimately, it's not the roadmap to life. And if you think that way, you'll read the Bible wrong. Uh, what you'll do is you'll keep, now let me, here's what you, you'll keep infusing yourself into the stories of the Bible like you're the hero. And this happens all the time. All right, so I, I mean, I want to be straight. I love you enough to be straight. You're not David. All right, you're Trouble in life is not Goliath. And if that's true, you're in a lot of trouble, bro, because you miss. Now you fling your stones and you miss, and Goliath's still there, and now what? Well, I had five. You'll miss all five. So if you view the scriptures through that lens that really all the superheroes in the Bible are actually you, then, man, you put a weight on your shoulders that, listen to me, you will not be able to bear. Jesus, David, Jesus is the greater David. Jesus is the greater Moses. Jesus is the greater Abraham. It's the whole point of the book of Hebrews. That Jesus is the greater than. So, so if you want to do this, I mean, you want to dig in. So that means Jesus is going to be David. Goliath is going to be, and this is all overstatement. David's a historical figure, right? Um, Jesus is going to be David in this shadow. Goliath is going to be sin and death. Who's that make you? Huh? And it doesn't make you the Israelites in the corner going, he's going to kill all of us. That's exactly who you are. <laughs> all right, so let's make sure we're playing the right part in 
the story. And so as this man said, it's really just about all these different situations. God did this to glorify himself. God did this through these people to glorify himself. It was never God did this through this person so that everyone would think that person was so great. It was always to come back to glorifying himself. And so that was one thing that was really impressed on my impressed said a word. That was something that left an impression on my heart of just not wanting to be like somebody else, but just asking that God would make me everything that he intended me to be, that I would be exactly who he called me to be, that I wouldn't go to the left or to the right, that I wouldn't look to do things in my own strength, but that I would fully rely on him. And that is what would make me a man after God's own heart. And so I hope this encourages one of you, two of you, maybe six of you. If it helped you, go ahead and leave a like like, comment, subscribe to the channel, share it with somebody so they can hear what we're talking about. But that's really what it comes down to, is just making sure that you're setting yourself up, you're posturing your heart in a way that God can use you to glorify himself. So have a great day, guys. Catch you on the next one.